I've traveled over 3,000 miles to one of the least spoiled places on Earth. Here you can still move in the traditional fashion over land where the influence of human beings is virtually nil. I've come to the very edge of the Arctic Circle, to Baffin Island. I'm here to meet one of the world's most adventurous wilderness travelers. Very few people know this climate better than Matty McNair. First layer I have is a wicking layer. This is a uh, capoline, but people wear polypropylene and all kinds of fancy stuff. Now, a wicking layer takes my sweat away from my skin so that it doesn't cool me, and it wicks it away. Because when you sweat, you're getting wet. And if you get wet, you die. I've adapted this and put a little nose guard on. To it's keep like Donald Duck. Yeah. <laughs> and here, there. Oh, complete cover. Complete cover. Yeah. <laughs> if the wind blows right through your clothing, then it doesn't keep you warm. So this is my wind layer. And on the top, I wear a caribou parka. When I'm in here, I feel safe. Wow. There. Matty McNair was born in the States, but now lives on Baffin Island with her husband Paul and their two young children. She's an expert with a dog sled team and totally at ease traveling through this inhospitable landscape. You look back and town is gone, and it was like we we're moving through space. Or it doesn't seem like way. Earth. Yeah, <laughs> some strange planet, and, and we just moved in our own little time capsule. It makes me think of sailing. Instead of being on, on the ocean in a boat, we're on the sea ice on a sled and it creaks and groans as it works its way over the little bumps and humps. This was Matty's home ground and she had planned a trip of some 90 miles. It would take us from the town of Ecaliot, 18 miles out across the frozen sea ice of Frobisher Bay. From there we'll travel up onto the featureless plateau known as the Meta Incognita or Dreaded Unknown before descending into the shapely Soper River Valley and on to our final destination, the tiny settlement of Lake Harbour. This is, quite literally, the journey of a lifetime. Oh, how come no one says mush? It isn't a lively enough word. It's yeah. too mushy. Yeah. Now, nobody ever uses it. They say hike or let's go or OK yeah. or on by, on by, ulo, G, 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 X, C. They're all nice and relaxed now, aren't they? Yeah. All these little fat bums waggling away in front of us. <laughs> you know, when their tails are up, it means they're happy. Really? Yeah. So at the end of a long, long day, we often talk about, you know, we had three tails down. That means, you know, three of them were depressed. We're that's really kind of crossing the grain of the sea, I suppose. Yeah, that's why we're so bumpy. Ugh. Hey, get up. Hey, get Our trip across the ice and over the snow-covered Arctic would take six days, and travelling by dog sled is more challenging than I'd expected. to pull this up. <laughs> I can hardly walk without pulling. <laughs> ah, what took you into that doors? What was, what was the big motivation? Well, my grandfather was a Harvard business professor and used to take my dad off paddling in the Maine woods. And My dad got into it and he and my mom used to be uh, whitewater paddlers. They won the nationals three times in a row back in the early 60s. And So I grew up paddling and being in the outer doors. And, Spend all our weekends paddling and canoeing and uh, biking and hiking, and I sort of just liked it too much to quit doing it. So when did you start going off on your own? Well, I was in college, and I uh, decided to do some winter camping, and I made all the classic mistakes because I didn't know anybody that knew how to winter camp. So my pots fell over and my stove wouldn't light, and you know all those sorts of things. But it was great. I just went off, and it was fun.
I soon learned that you can't go against the weather in a climate like this. Storms can blow up from nowhere, and then the wind chill lowers the air temperature to minus 100 degrees Celsius. By anyone's standards, that's cold. The real heroes are Matty's 10 native Canadian Eskimo dogs who are bred for these conditions. When the wind dropped, we were on our way again. But Matty and I now faced the most difficult section on the whole route, a passage through a narrow ravine that requires skill and determination. Putting in these boots, I'm afraid. <laughs> Whoa. What the hell? <coughs> I'll try to swing them over so we can try to bring it up. Okay. <coughs> hike, 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 hike. Come on. Ready, hike. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Good job, just take it up. Hike, hike. Good boy, Nick. Come on, hike, hike. Hike, hike. Hike, hike. Hey. <coughs> Whoa! Woo! Whoa! Raven! Whoa, Raven! Better. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Raven! You can see it to the slant. Yeah. The trail we want to stay right up on top. And that's going to be your job. Keep pushing it forward. Okay. All right, let's go, boys. Heck. Ready? Heck. Whoa! Hang in there. It just strikes me. What if something did go wrong and there was a sort of real injury? Um, I mean, is there any rescue service or anything? Well, yes, but who are you going to notify them that you need to be rescued? Hey, Kike! Hey, Kike! Well, I'm from this school of uh, don't get yourself in trouble. Hey, Kike! Hey, get up. Head him one. Looking at the map in Baffin Island is a strange experience, particularly in winter. There's no communities to take your bearings from. All the lakes are frozen over, and you're just left with a line of contours. Apart from the native Inuit, only a very few people have travelled here before. Matty gained the knowledge of Baffin Island the hard way. With her partner Paul and another couple, she made the first circumnavigation of the world's fifth largest island by dog sled. It's an achievement that even now, Matty's still coming to terms with. We set off to go around Baffin Island, and we left February 15th, 1990, and we got back June 10th. And it was, uh, well, according to the map, it was 4,000 kilometers, but dogs don't go in straight lines. So that was a long trip. That was my Everest. And that took a few bit of courage. Yeah, yeah. And it was going into the unknown. I mean, at the time, we didn't know if it could be done. And that was the exciting thing. That was the, the little thing that kind of stuck out there is maybe it can't be done, but just maybe it could be. And we're going to see if we can. Gee, gee, whoa, 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 whoa. We've now reached our high point of the meta incognita some 2,000 feet above sea level on this desolate but strangely beautiful upland plateau. Once the dogs had been tied up for the night, our thoughts turned again to Matty's pioneering expedition. Do you think this trip, this, this, this trip through Baffin Island, was the most important thing you've ever done? I think it was, because it challenged me the furthest. And to have such a long trip and so challenging over such a long time really, really made quite an um, impact on, on me as a person. It was very, very special. Did you see hey. much wildlife? No. We saw a polar bear. Did you? At close quarters? Well, it was a little too close. 
where we'd been told, well, if a bear comes into camp, your dogs will make a funny sound. One morning, about five in the morning, when we were snug in our little beds, we heard the dogs making a funny noise, but we didn't really want to believe it was a funny noise. And so uh, we were just kind of coming out of our deep dream state and trying to focus on what was happening and what to do when uh, right beside the tent, all of a sudden there was this... <laughs> and had you realized at that point that it was a polar bear? Oh, yeah, at that point, this whole side of the tent caves in. Oh. Rosemary, who's on that side, screams. She's still in her bag, and how she jumps in her bag, I don't know, but she lands on top of Paul. You know, now they're both trying to get out of their bags. Jeff and I are at the door. The guns are outside because they'll condensate if they're not, if they're inside. So we're at the door, getting the guns. You know, we're going out there with our boots on, like, ramble, like, where's that bear? Where's that bear? If I had the safety on, where, where? You know, it's just like, like, oh boy. And uh, by the time we got out the door, the bear was loping off into the rising sun, and I had dogs loose at night. And they were chasing the bear off. They were chasing the yeah. polar bear. Yeah. Cool. They said that's their job. Tentacles are comfort. Yeah. Did you get an idea of the thing's size? Well, we did. You know, I went and looked for the tracks. And he'd approach a downwind, and he, he, he zigzagged back and forth. He'd, his uh, prints were, like, bigger than my hand. Very, very big. <laughs> Around that little point here. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think a lot about my children and my family and uh, how much I like doing what I'm doing and living where I am living. When you did your big trip around Baffin Island and you left the kids behind, how did you feel about that? But most days I was way too focused on keeping going and keeping warm and eating and those were the important things in the day. It was when, when I came into a community and I got a chance to call him on the phone that, you know, I, it was hard. It was hard. And Sarah's little voice saying, Mom, are you coming home yet? And I'm going, well, no, we still have a few months to go. <laughs> that was hard. It was difficult for them and for me. But in the long run, I think we've got a happier mom, a mom who doesn't feel like I'm tied down and I can't do things. And I, I don't resent them that way for being kids and holding me back from doing things I want to do. Huh? Good boys. Huh? All right. Whoa. Whoa. Whew. Thank you, Rod. Yeah. Oh, it Good. is cold. It is. It's clearing off, but it's getting colder. Cold. How do you cope with the cold? I mean, it's just put more clothes on. Yeah, but when you first came to live in Baffin Island, I mean, surely sometimes you felt the cold was a problem. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you learn the art of uh, eating before you're hungry, yeah. drink before you're thirsty, stop before you're tired, put yeah. clothes on before you get cold. Yeah. And what about just general day-to-day -day living? I mean, you, you've been here for a bit now. Have you become used to it? Oh, yeah. I mean, the kids are... Uh, I mean, you look at 40 below weather and how do the kids dress to go to school? Blue jean jackets, baseball caps, sneakers, half undone. And that's how they go to school. Yeah, you get used to it. And it's very dry. It's not so cold. But surely sometimes, even the youngsters dressing like trying to be stylish, oh, surely they true. suffer now and again. Oh, yeah. You see them with frostbitten ears and noses sometimes. Little blistering spots. Yeah. And, and up here, again, it's a different... This, the cold is... Sometimes you don't notice it, but it, it, it's really a killer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not so bad as long as you're fueled up and you're warm and you have good clothing. But if you sweat up, or if you're out for skiing and you sweat and... Say you break a binding and all of a sudden you can't keep up that same body momentum, then your body temperatures are going to drop really quickly. And that's what's really scary, because there's no way to escape the cold. Well, maybe we should get going again. All right, are you ready? Okay. 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 Hey, hey. Oh, the key Unbuy. Key Unbuy. 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 Ready. Ready. Anchors away. Pull her up. We have a choice here. We can continue on across the plateau on the standard route, or we can take the old dog sledding route. And I've never been down it, but I've talked to some of the old hunters, and they drew it out on the map for me. This last part of our journey was the most exciting. 
Matty's new route would take us, all being well, to the top of the Soper River Valley. This was new ground even to Matty, and we didn't know what to expect. It's hard to tell if there are any sudden drop-offs or not. We'll just have to be really careful. Well, I expect our dogs will not uh, be as keen. They're going to think we're lost. And so they're going to keep saying, this isn't a trail, you're totally lost. So we'll have to motivate them a little bit more. It's more um, expedition mode. I think it, the dogs get used to one trail and they're quite happy just to follow the one trail. Well, they do. They have a very, very uncannily good memory. Good boys. Good dogs. Good boys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Atta, boys. It's opening out quite nicely, though, Matty. Yeah. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like a good route. Nice to ski, doesn't you? Woo, yeah. Do you ever bring skis with you on your trip? Sometimes I do. When I expect uh, big storms, I do, and then I sometimes have to ski in front of the dogs. Aha, lovely. So we call it uh, running rabbit. Running rabbit. <laughs> you run and ski in front of them. Yeah. boy. <laughs> well, they must find it nice to be downhill instead of up. Yep. Ah, oh, this loot looks really nice. I like to get off the plateau. It's so cold up there. It should be warmer down below. Maybe yeah. not so windy. Well, your definition of warmer is probably a lot different to mine. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Hike, hike! Ready! Hike! 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 Running well today, Matty. Yeah, they're doing great. I think it's this uh, nice, snappy weather. Yeah. Probably this morning about minus 30 Celsius. And that invigorates them. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Woo -wee. What do you think of the new route? Oh, I love it. I love it. Watch as well here. Yep. yep. Close to that one, well, weren't we? The most lasting impression I got from this landscape was of its physical features. But we'd not seen much wildlife, and the only close encounter was a little disappointing, to say the least. Dead caribou. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, you see something like that lying here, and you think the caribou are so used to this sort of climate, but yeah. it's such a harsh environment, isn't it? It is, it is. These guys have it rough. I mean, when you think about it, they're just eating lichen. You know, they have five stomachs. The animal itself is mostly stomach. There's about this much stomach in there. Wow. Hmm. All they eat is lichen. <coughs> yeah. Oh. Well, sometimes if they're really hungry, they'll, they'll eat uh, grass, but they don't particularly care for it. Sometimes yeah. in the spring, they'll uh, eat um, willows, the little buds on the willows. They just strip the trees in the springtime. They like it. But I'm not surprised that she, you know, I'm surprised she's not been torn apart mm, by foxes or... Our wolves, well, I mean, may not be that long there. dead, it's hard to say. I don't want to cut it open and um, make a coat out of it. <laughs> well, it's not very good for a coat. You see, look at this. The hair is starting to come out. It's shedding. Yeah. Yeah. So when you want to make coats, is in October. The fur is, it's a dark brown, it's very short, and it's, it's very in very good condition. But you can see that's not in good condition. So why is caribou skin so good for making coats? Well, it's hollow hair, and it's incredibly warm. If you cut open a seal, you'll find he's got about that much fat. And if you cut open a caribou, you won't find any fat. That's how good his coat is. He doesn't need to put on fat. So each hair is hollow and, and traps air. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost like down in a parka. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's incredibly warm. You'll have to try my caribou pot for some time. <laughs> Doesn't go fit me. Oh, I think so. That's pretty good. Well, there's one good thing about this climate. When they're lying dead, they don't smell. <laughs> See if you can break the other brake off on a bump. Hey, it's off, yeah? No, it isn't. Oh, the no, other no, one. Right, okay. Up, up. It's traveling in such a traditional, timeless method over landscape that's just raw nature. Yeah. It's a wilderness. Raw is the word. It is raw, isn't it? Yeah. Immensely beautiful. Ah. Well, there's something about the power of a wilderness area that uh, I think touches all of us, and that's why wilderness is so um, important to all of us. You know, the more we spend time in cities, we really need that balance with the wilderness. And to have great wildernesses is uh, really important. Cameron, this is one of my favorite places. It's sort of like a, a magic rock. When we come around, you'll see it kind of square and it's sitting at a funny angle. And it's got a little tiny rock right on top of it. Oh, I see it, yeah. Just a little knob on the top. Yeah. It's just sort of a landmark where yeah. we're coming into a narrow part now. And oh, it's, it's nice uh, the way the sun's glinting off the yeah. snow, too. Yeah. This is the Soper River Valley, right? Uh huh. You know this area well? Well, pretty well. I, I do a lot of rafting down here in the summertime with people. With Raft and inflatable kayaks. Uh -huh. It's a park now, yeah. and uh, and it's real pretty. I mean, it's hard to imagine <laughs> this is a river. I know. And in a few I months' know. time, it's going to be a raging top. When the snow melts, it it, uh, it melts off and it runs on the surface. The river is just frozen solid, and uh, the water doesn't actually break up. The ice doesn't break up until later. So we get runoff in May, and uh, it's hard. You can't travel this route anymore in May, and then in June it breaks up and by the end of June on, on the river. I've been looking at some of the maps and a lot of the names, a lot of the place names, the names of the rivers and, and, and the lakes and some of the hills are obviously names that come from some of the old explorers. And yet other ones are Inuit. Uh -huh. A lot of Inuit names have something to do with uh, the memory of what happened there. Um, one of my favorites is a, a place called Two Men Kissed for No Reason and the Caribou Got Away. <laughs> You're joking. No, that's, that's the name of the name of this little point. Two men yeah. kissed for no reason and the caribou got away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very it's a very descriptive and everybody remembers that's the point. Yes. <laughs> yes. I meant it <laughs> this landscape is unlike anything else I've encountered. After five days on the trail, I was eagerly oh, looking forward to seeing some trees again. The forest. I'm amazed this, you know, the terminology that this is, this is a forest. <laughs> it reminds me a few years ago, I was in Iceland, and we went to a place called Thorsmork, which was the forest of Thor. And it was just like this. I couldn't believe it. We're 650 miles north of the tree line. I didn't realize it was a tree line. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. Although this has been fantastic <laughs> landscape to pass uh -huh, through, uh -huh. I long to see some green. Do you never long to see some green trees or green grass? Oh, well, I love it when I'm down south, but I don't actually miss it because uh, there are lots of flowers here. And this, is, this valley is actually quite green and lush um, compared to many places. So maybe that's why these willows are growing here, yeah. too. Yeah. But you don't miss trees at all? No. no. When I go down south, the thing that uh, the trees get in the way. Yeah. You know, there's uh, great views and there are all these trees in the way and you have to... I've always liked climbing mountains to get above the trees. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to climb any mountains to get above the trees. I think I like the freedom of having a lot of space. And I can go where I want to go. And um, the quality of light, the intensity of light. Yeah. Almost like a painting. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could paint it. <laughs> Thank you.
What are you feeling at the end of a trip like this? Well, I have two feelings. One is, you know, I've made it on here. It's, you know, hot shower and hot food and uh, soft bed. But the other part of me is sad. I've left something. I'm coming from a, a different space. So I have a little trouble with the transition sometimes. What day of the week it is, what time it is, that kind of thing. We're there! Let's go! Yahoo! Oh, holy copper! Hey, Wow! Hang on! Oh, that's great! Hey, all the way in now! Hey! Come on, boys! Let's go! There we go! Come on! Good doggy! The last run, darling! The last two! Yeah, last two. Hang on. Oh, Get up, Nepo. You're making a mistake, buddy. Woo! Yeah! Oh, what a finish, eh? Oh, terrific. Woo! Good doggy. Yeah, well done, dogs. Nixie, G. Hey. G. Hey, you must be so tired. Good boy. G. G. Good doggy. G, G, Nixie, G, G. Oh, it looks like a good place to tie up. Yeah, okay. Good. You made it! We're here. <laughs> good, good, well done. Hey, good. hey, hey, hey well done. <laughs> great, thank Yay, you. Hey, doggy! That's been great. Oh, let's just thank Woo. these dogs. Good They've boy. So good. Hey. I felt it, too. I just stood in the back and ran from time to time. <laughs> but, you know, these guys must have been tired. Yeah. Journey's end. It would have been fun to return the same way, but there's an easier option. This way. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. let's go. Oh, let's you're go. not keen, eh? I know it's scary. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Up you go. Up you go. Up you go. Hey, we're going. Hey, that's it. You got it. Wonderful. Great. Wonderful. All right. Okay, you got him. Now, where's he going? He's uh, going right on the back. Okay, okay. For me, it's a sense of light that's different than anywhere else on this planet. You can see for miles. It's uh, looking out and seeing endless sky. And it's a sense of space. There's room to spread your wings and move. It's, uh, it's wonderful.